All right, hey YouTube, Mike Jordan, Uncomplicated. So this is going to be the prequel sequel to my 30 amp RV plug install. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it uh, somewhere. How does this work up here? So I'll link that video. I'll link it at the end. You can watch that video. But this is where I started before I even thought about installing that plug. That's why I'm calling it the prequel. And then we will look at the sequel without the meat in the middle. So we can see how, how we started and how we turned out. And then if you want to see what we actually did with the 30 amp RV plug install, check the other video. But this is Southwire. It's a voltage drop calculator. Um, link up here. And I'll also put the link in the description so you don't have to try to figure that out or type that in. But Southwire, if you're not familiar with them, they make all kinds of wire. They make all kinds of electrical tools, all kinds of boxes and breakers, and they make all things electrical. And they have this awesome voltage drop calculator. So when you're doing a, a voltage system install, whether it's uh, like your DC system and your 12 volt battery systems, or whether it's your AC system, your 120 volt systems, which is what we're talking about today, this is an awesome tool to figure out what you need to do or, or to make sure you're not gonna do dumb. So this is what I use to decide if that 50 amp cord that I uh, set up in the other video was gonna work. So again, you can watch that other video, maybe some of this will make more sense. This again is the, uh, the prequel. So if we look at this form, uh, most of the stuff on this side we don't need to do anything with. We're on a residential or AC alternating current. Um, if you want to do DC, you would change that. Um, I'm in the US of A, so we got we like feet. Um, single phase is what we're using. That's what 99% of electrical most folks are familiar with is. We're using copper wire and there's conduit non uh, non direct and burial. So our conductor size. In the other video, I used a uh, 30 amp RV uh, connection cord, and those are, um, they're all 10 gauge. You buy them off the shelf, um, you may find the cheap Chinese something somewhere, but they're all 10 gauge pretty much. Um, and that's what I've got. If you were wiring it uh, direct, then 10 gauge is what you would need to use. So again, and you can see some of that in my, uh, my other video. But what we want to look at today, you get this uh, drop down, we want to look at voltage drop. Now, voltage drop um, across a length of wire, industry standard is 3% is okay. So what this is going to tell us is, is if what we want to do is going to be okay, is going to work. So again, our conductor size, I just said, was 10 gauge. So we'll switch this to 10 gauge. All right, length of cable run. So I've got a 50 foot extension in that other video again. So we're gonna use that to start with. And voltage, the system is, you can see I've already got, I've already used it a couple of times, 12 volt, one volt, that's what I'm always going back and forth. So 120 volts, that's what uh, your AC, your house current is that uh, I'm connecting the RV to. And current at the end of the uh, run amp. So my RV is a 30 amp RV. So I'm going to put in 30 amps. If you had a 50 amp RV, you use the 50 and do some other things different. And then after we have all that information entered, then we just need to click calculate. And then this comes up with a voltage drop of 2.62%. So again, I said 3% is industry standard, and we want to be we're going to be below that at 30 amps. Um, it figures our resistance per thousand feet and comes up, uh, uh, it picks a power factor of 0.9. That's probably pretty accurate for most things in your RV. Sometimes those AC systems, systems will be a little bit higher, but we really don't need to concern ourselves with that at the moment. So we've got uh, under a 3% voltage drop, so everything is good. Now, that 50 amp extension that I plugged in that I used in that other video is actually connecting to my RV with another 25 foot uh, cord. 
That 25 foot cord is a, the standard 25 foot cord that comes with most any RV that you buy. So actually, uh, I've got not 50 feet of run, I've got 75 feet of run. So if we change that and we hit our calculate key again, we've got a 3.93% drop. So about a percentage point over the 3% I said is kind of an industry standard. Now I could, uh, I don't need that extra 25 feet to reach where my RV is. I could probably get 10, get another 10 foot cord. I just don't have one. So if I did that, my run would then be 60 feet and I calculate and I'm right there at that voltage drop. So 3%, 4%, even if I'm using that longer, that longer cord. So let's uh, bring up my calculator here and my calculator. If I have, um, 120 volts, that's where we start. And you can see that it, again in the other install video, you can see that I actually start with 120 volts, uh, measured 120 volts. So if I have a 3% voltage drop, then we want to multiply that by 0.97, and that gives us 116 volts. That is our prediction uh, if we had the 60 foot cord at 116 volts at the RV when we're plugged into 120. So let's say we had that same 120 and I'm actually using my 75 foot cord, which was a 4% drop, just under 4%. We'll use 4%. So we multiply that by 0.96 and we get 115.2 volts. So see, not a significant drop for that extra 25 feet there. Now, if you have an EMS, one of those electric, electrical management systems, they will typically cut you off at 108 volts. Uh, some of them go a little lower, but most typically around 108 volts. So again, kind of a rule of thumb, you want to stay above. So there is what this prediction with the south wire voltage drop calculator is predicting that I would be somewhere around 116, 115 volts if I'm running the full 30 amps of the RV. This is how we figured out that we're not doing dumb by, uh, by running uh, 75 feet of cord because you run a whole lot of cord, you can do, uh, you can do very dumb. Um, so for instance, if we had, instead of having that, 10 amp cord, your average extension cord is only about 16 gauge, which it doesn't even give us that, It'll give us a, uh, a 14 gauge. So that would be probably a medium size, uh, you know, it's your regular three prong outlet extension cord. So if we click that and we go to calculate, you see we've got a huge voltage drop now and we couldn't run uh, there's no way we could run 60 feet of extension cord that tiny uh we're just uh too much resistance losing too many volts so that is just a, a little overview of the uh, south wire voltage drop calculator again you can use it for your 12 volt uh system also figuring out wire size and i've used that for uh uh, my uh, solar installs and all kinds of stuff. If you have any questions about that, just ask uh, down below in the comments and I'll uh, do my best to answer for you. But there's the end of the prequel. And so now we'll move on to the sequel. All right. Here we go. So here's how we know our cable is set up good. If we look here, right beside the cursor, we've got about 116 volts there. So again, 116, 115 volts. All right, I've got the air conditioner running and we're charging batteries right now. And if you remember, when we first hooked this up, we had about 120 volts. So we've got about a four volt drop across that uh, distance. So, market, remarkably better than what it used to be on my uh, 
my little uh, 14 gauge 15 amp circuit. Now if you don't have all of these fantastical goodies, uh, you should get them. But if you don't have all these fantastical goodies and you're not going to get them, show you a good way to monitor voltage is going to give you a good idea of uh, health of your system or health of the uh, line coming into your uh, camper. So again, running air conditioning, charging batteries, and get about 116 volt load. So let's take a look at one more much simpler way to, to monitor your voltage. Okay, if you look behind my TV, that's why I keep mine, you can see I've got a little uh, outlet tester back there. So I can see that I, when, when the TV's on TV or not even on at all, I can kind of walk by and uh, peek behind the TV and see that. Uh, get a little better look. So this is just a plug-in. It's an outlet tester, actually. You can use it to test um, uh, the ground fault circuit interrupters. Um, you can see it's got all the little uh, color code dots on there. It can tell you if something's wrong with the power or the outlet. But the main thing I use this particular one is just to monitor the voltage. You can see it's a little bit different than the Victron, so it's probably not quite as accurate as the, uh, the Victron system, but it still gives me a good indication that I've got healthy power I don't have voltage sag and uh, running the air conditioner and charging at the same time uh, on this long, long cable is not detrimental. You don't want to see this thing dropping down below 115 volts, 112 volts. You know, if it gets down really low, that's very hard on everything in your RV and it's especially hard on the uh, air conditioning compressor. So if you've got that kind of voltage sag, you've got to really pay attention to either longer length cables or lower amperage connections when you're trying to run big devices like the air conditioner.